Kenya is a key player in East Africa and one of the most prominent ones in Africa at large. With close to 50 million inhabitants in 2018, it presents the seventh most populated African country. Kenya has the largest GDP in Eastern and Central Africa and has a fast-growing economy with 5.8% annual growth in 2016. Due to relatively stable microeconomic environment, low oil prices, but also a revival of tourism, increasing remittance inflows, and most importantly, government-led infrastructure development initiatives. Kenya is also a major communications and logistic hub with an important Indian Ocean port strategic land borders with surrounding countries. Nevertheless, according to the latest statistics of 2012, almost half of Kenyan population still lives in poverty, which results in a negative migration of around 50,000 people per year. Kenya is a factor-driven economy, as its main sectors still derive their competitive advantage mainly on endowments of labor and natural resources. As for the industry structure, services are a dominant contributor to the national GDP, while manufacturing value added, MVA, is still relatively low. The share of MVA in GDP as of 2016 was only 10%. The major manufacturing activities that contribute to the MVA are food and beverages at 6%, textiles at 9%, printing and publishing at 8%. A similar trend to the one of MVA can be observed for services, which contribution to GDP of Kenya has dropped from 55% in 2007 to 45% in 2016. On the flip side, the value added of agriculture has increased in the same period, from 23% to 35% of the GDP. The rise is not only due to the drop in other value-adding activities, but also due to the increased volume and an increase of agricultural productivity. Two policy programs and strategies are developed by Kenyan government to develop local manufacturing. The most important one is Kenya Vision 2030 for Manufacturing Sector, launched in the year 2008, under which the following objectives are pursued. 1. Strengthening the capacity of local content of domestically manufactured goods. 2. Increasing the generation and use of research and development results. 3. Rising the share of products in the regional market from 7% to 15%, and lastly, developing a niche product for existing and new markets. The second key government document is Kenya Industrial Transformation Program, launched in the year 2015 and guided by Vision 2030. The KITP is supposed to, one, launch sector-specific flagship projects in key sectors, including agro-processing, textile, leather, construction services and material, oil and gas and mining services, and IT-related sectors that build on Kenya's comparative advantage. The second function of KITP is to develop Kenyan's SME by supporting rising stars and building capabilities with model factories. Thirdly, the KITP is expected to enable environment to accelerate industrial development through industrial parks and zones, along infrastructure corridors, technical skills, supporting infrastructure and ease of doing business. And finally, KTP is meant to create an industrial development fund. In order to continue its growing trend, Kenya needs to increase efficiency of the economic system and follow its vision 2030 to industrialize the country by implementing the next production revolution, NPR. From the governmental point of view, there is need for more critical selection and design of mutual coherent policy programs that underpin Kenya's Vision 2030. At the moment, there are a myriad of programs that overlap, which causes inefficient use of public resources. There is also a range of issues related to the enabling infrastructures and technologies that hamper a smoother emergence of next production revolution. First, 
grid division is relatively low and unable to reach most of the population, especially in the rural areas, which make business activities extremely difficult. Second, resilience of the power network is low, making the availability of electricity uncertain and unstable. Expansion of a reliable network is imperative. Then, even if electricity is available, it is rather costly or even unaffordable to micro and small businesses that dominate the market. There is an utilization of available renewable energy resources, more strategic public investment, and attraction of private investment, also foreign ones, using public-private partnership could speed up the development. There is need for further development of logistical infrastructure, which is currently not able to create smooth supply chain flows. In particular, railroads are necessary to make the flow of goods around the country more stable and most importantly, more cost effective. Education also needs to be improved to build the capacity for NPR. There is a need for board advancement in both vocational and higher education. The former is necessary to further improve technical absorptive capacity of local farms. The latter should develop science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM curriculum, and match teaching and research to the industry needs. As far as the opportunities for enabling and fostering the NPR in Kenya, there are a number of directions to be followed. Renewable energy potential, particularly geothermal and solar, represents a chance to fulfill the increasing local demand for sustainable energy. Additionally, the most promising sector are related to agriculture and its derivatives. The future potential lies in mechanization of agriculture to increase productivity and further development of food, beverages and horticulture industries, including tea, coffee, meat, spices and fresh cut flowers by integrating their high leverage for export. The potential of developing logistics infrastructure is great, particularly if the port of Mombasa gets better connected to the rest of Kenya and to the landlocked and other neighboring countries in the region. This direction is in line with the potential benefits Kenya can draw from its superior position in the region, both in terms of the global value chain and boost their export regionally and globally.